Aspect of Jade. I really like the sound of that as well, too, right? So I need to nuke Mesomasca and give water to an urchin. Got it. <laughs> That's right. Just you, go live in, in uh, ten pen in uh, ten copper tower, and uh, and just nuke Mesomasca. So, thank you all for that, for the fun, the humor. Um, Jester, I'm really happy that you are, you know, you're into it. And look, I'm not just here to sell you minis. Um, if you have questions on how to use it, how to build encounters, um, you know, I want to run a squad of goblins, but I only have one. What do I do? I, and not just I, but there's plenty of other people over here. Let us help support you with this hobby. New players are welcome, not just their money. In fact, that that comes first here. You are a guest at this table. And I want you to feel that you are you are welcomed and that even if you're brand new to this game, you are welcomed and you are supported in your questions and in your pursuit of the hobby. Um in any form that it takes. Now, let's get into creating villains. Um, you all, um, actually, here, let me let me close this down here. There we go. Might be a little easier to read. Plus, it'll help balance, I think, the... All right, anyway. Um... We made... We started this, this session... I, I guess I really can't call it a session. We started this concept last, <clears throat> last week when we randomly generated five PCs using uh, the worksheet we developed here for the channel. It's just a random role guide. It is a storytelling supplement that we made here in order uh, to come up with viable, br uh, believable characters using... The player's handbook. Keep it simple. Keep it basic. Most everything we do here only involves the core three books. And even the majority of that's really just uh, the player's handbook for like 80%. And, uh, you know, the DMG for another 15%. And then occasionally we'll reference the monster manual for something. <laughs> oh, uh, so what's the color combination, Roxy? So from here, we were able to extract information because in 5th edition, oh, not that one. In 5th edition, you have a background that supports your character, not just a race and a class, right? You need three legs to make a stable stool to sit on. In 5th ed, your character perches atop race, class, and background. Don't forget that. So we extrapolated aspects of each of the characters and uh, we did that uh, yesterday and now we are going forward and we've made some NPCs with which to interact. We discussed some campaign ideas but that's going to be for maybe maybe tomorrow. For sure Saturday. When we outline a campaign. And by the way, all the stuff we do on this channel here, it's available to you on our Discord. You can download the PDFs, the documents, and you can watch the characters and other content being created because I'll repost a link to the YouTube section where we do that. It's all freely available to you because it's a thank you uh, and a sign of respect that I really appreciate you spending your evenings here with me. Um, am I right in saying the minis in the orphanage are without a price? Yeah, they're three if it's unstated plus 50 cents 
I, all right, so the first mini, whether it's five dollars, three dollars, or eleven billion dollars, is three dollars to ship. Unless you've also supported a box, but unfortunately, right now I'm out of boxes. Additional minis are the cost of the mini plus fifty cents. However, if you're going to purchase a larger order than just like a couple minis, I would be willing to work out with you um, an abbreviated postage fee. And, I might, and I'll probably even throw in a couple bonus minis as a thank you uh, for doing a big amount of business with me. So let me know what, you know, you could even say, look, Matt, I have a budget of $50 and I'm really looking for some staples of role playing. What do you suggest? Give me homework and I'll get back to you with a quote and we can we can go back and forth on it. If I buy one now, yeah, uh, so if you end up sponsoring a box and you want me to hang on to it for you, the box will initiate that $3 shipment because it's already included. Like, I'm already going to be sending a mini out to you, so I'm, this one's just going to be the 50 cents. Place the dice in water, spin them. If they're unbalanced, they'll roll to a specific number. It's less likely with clear or crystal dice. You can see videos of people doing that. Roxy says one set's black and red, the other is blue and purple. Ooh, very cool color combos. And yes, Crown Royal bags are the default dice bags of many a gamer. So now that we have taken a look at our PCs, we've made NPCs. And we can now look at both, and we can extrapolate a villain of sorts. And a villain is going to be, a villain's an NPC, just with an extra twist, right? Oh, well, happy birthday to you, Jester. You need to rock out for a bit? I guess that's Hangout, right? That's the one. Or Hang 10, I should say. So if you're following along, class, Chapter 4 of your Dungeon Master's Guides. Come on now, class. Open your DMGs, Chapter 4. We're talking about NPCs, and we're moving to villains. What's been missing, Forsaken? By their actions, villains provide job security for heroes. Chapter 3 helps you determine suitable villains for your adventures, while this section helps you to flesh out their evil schemes, methods, and weaknesses. Let... The tables that follow inspire you. So we have right here. And we can go up to chapter three as well. The broad aspect of chapter three will help you get through um, will help you get through adventure creation. If you're really stuck and you say, I want to run an adventure, I've never done it before, or I don't have ideas or something along those lines, chapter three will help. By the way, one second, I gotta, I gotta plug my earphones back in. And you can see how it'll help you um, it'll help you, uh, with dungeon goals, wilderness goals, you know, what kind of a campaign do you want to run? Um, others, adventure villains. So we're going to start here and we're going to roll a D 20 and find out which kind of a villain we're going to have for this campaign. Oh, 
Oh, Forsaken? Uh, they're around somewhere. Um, ni uh, neither of them have really been in the room that much. Um, so we'll see if they, uh, if one of them pops up. It'd be kind of inconvenient right now, because I have a, I have a bowl of, um, uh, queso blanco, uh, with some jalapeno peppers in it. So he probably wouldn't like that too much. You got the Princes of the Apocalypse book? Oh, okay. Hey, a campaign is an excellent place to start, because a lot of it, I mean... It's not going to hold your hand, or I'm not saying it's easy, but you can, as a, an aspiring DM, see the the rhyme and reason to a uh, to an adventure. You can see how there are considerations for interactions with NPCs or monsters. You can get uh, an idea of layouts for dungeons, that kind of a thing. A Nathan explosion voice. Oh, Metalocalypse. I miss I miss you. Actually, my ho uh, I can't say my hometown. It's not where I was born. But the town in which I uh, I live and work here was actually mentioned in an episode of Metalocalypse. I thought that was pretty cool. El Eskimo, welcome. You think the 5e is good to introduce new players? I myself have never DM'd, so this is both freaking me out and exciting. That, number one, that's natural to feel that way. Two, yes, 5e, without being, um, without being patronizing or like, oh, this is, this is easy mode. You know, only plebs pay, uh, play 5th edition. 5th ed is a good jumping on point for new role players as PCs and as DMs. And Eskimo, you're in the correct place. If you have questions about how to DM, how to create a story, in fact, we're doing that right up here. We're going into ways that if you don't already have a villain concept in mind, how can you create a villain? This, the way that I hope to present information to you for both education and empowerment is like a Bob Ross style. This is D&D &D 101. You can do all of this epic tier um, story crafting, and you don't have to have played D&D &D at all, because it's already in you. As a human being, you are a storyteller. That is our unique gift as a species that others that no other species has. You have everything that you already need to play D&D &D right up here. The rest is semantics. You know, it's like a little bit of math, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of referencing uh, things that are already laid out there for you. D&D &D is here. D&D &D is in the conversation we're having right now. And Eskimo, not just me, we have a whole um, mentor network here and a workshop. If you want to go in and you want to work on something... You can never be a bother to us, okay? We're here to help new players come into the hobby and into the game. And for those who've been playing for a long time, maybe we can give you a little bit of refreshment. Maybe we can empower you, give you some new ideas to run uh, with your players that maybe they've never experienced before. You know, in case you've fallen into a rut or maybe it's just been a while and you want to get back into it. And yes, tropes work. Yeah, let's add a happy little cursed item right here. Let, let's let's add a little mimic right here. Okay. Our adventure villain for the campaign we're making. Oh, and one more. I know I've said this before. Right here, past content. This is... You will find campaign outlines, magic items. You'll find it's instructional, right? It's simply a recording of us going through the exercises together and talking about it. It's nothing advanced. It's nothing beyond your reach. And the files we create, right? The PDF files, the document files, it's all here for you to download for free. You don't have to subscribe. 
You don't have to be a Patreon uh, patron. You don't have to. You don't have to give me one bit on Twitch. It's here for you. And I hope that you use it and you enjoy it. And if you have questions on it, we're here to support you. Let's roll a d20, shall we? Oh, did I lose my page? Oh, no, oh, those are the goals. Uh, Event-based adventures, introduction. Oh, here we go. Adventure villains, derp. All right, let's roll our d20 to get some random inspiration. RNG is welcome in this channel. It's not a three-letter word like you might find in other corners of Twitch. Five. A giant bent on plunder. You know what's coming to mind? Where are they? Oh, they're out of my reach. Given the setting location, we might just have... I think we have our big bad evil guys. And they are quite literally big. And perhaps quite literally bad and evil. They may not all be guys, though. We might have some frost giants or even storm giants be the uh, be the the villains of this game. Hey Hunter, well, um, let me know what's confusing you. <clears throat> All we're doing right now is we're gonna roll some dice for some random villain aspects. And we're going to bring it all in together. So the only thing that we're really worried about here is a villain. I'm not worried about any of the other charts. I just want to know about our villain. See, there's all kinds of things here. Oh, if you haven't played before, you are welcome here, Hunter. And uh, don't let all these charts confuse you. You you are not referencing these charts all the time in D&D. Right now, we are in Dungeon Master mode. We're setting up a story. Or at least a hypothetical story for hypothetical uh, characters that we've... Uh, for players that have characters that we've generated. And now we're going to come down here. And we're going to discuss our villain, right? It's a giant that's bent on plunder. We can take this literally or metaphorically. A giant just doesn't have to be a frost giant or a storm giant. A giant could be some something else that's uh, physically large. Or maybe it just is a giant force of some kind. 10,000 uh, 10, orcs are descending on the valley or something along those lines. Ogres. Ettens. Yetis. Yetis. A thousand come at me, bros. A self-aware purple worm. That would be actually kind of interesting. How many people would try and talk to a purple worm instead of just trying to savage it? Okay. To randomly determine what our objective or scheme is, I'm going to roll a D8. And then within any category, we're going to roll a D4. So, we have six. Power. Okay. Within power, let's roll a d4, and we rolled another four. Gain the favor of a ruler. Now, this is something the PCs, the player characters, might not realize at first, because this is probably a very overt threat. A bunch of giants uh, uh, in some fashion, 
are going to be threatening the area in which they're adventuring. And little do they know that this is actually nothing more than a scout raid. That these giants, as powerful as they are, as the big bad evil guys, as the bosses of this campaign, or rather this adventure, may not be an entire campaign. They're actually doing this because they're trying to appease an even greater threat. But of course you don't let them know that at, until the end. Most of the savaging is done by the purple worm. Now, let's determine randomly. Uh, it, it's not that you have to go random either. You can just sit down as a human being and say, you know what? Uh, an evil wizard uh, wants to control a mining town because there's a rare metal inside that he needs for a magical experiment. There you go. That's an adventure. But for exercises, for mental exercises and some gymnastics, I suppose, that we're performing here, let's subject ourselves to randomness. And let's bend our, our thinking to accommodate for all kinds of wacky combinations that maybe we didn't expect. And part of the reason for doing that is improvisation is a good skill to have in D&D &D on either side of the DM screen if you use one. We're going to roll a d20. 14. Ooh. The method is going to be through politics. Specifically, now let's roll a d6, right? See that? Oh. Right here. That this is this is what we're looking at. So Hunter, I mean, yeah, you're seeing a big ah, uh, it's crushing. Ah. Uh, don't get caught up in it. We're only zooming in on little parts of things here and there. You got this. You, you have the power in you to do this. Whether through your own noggin and you don't even need a book, or if you want to challenge yourself and go random, ta-da, there we go. D6. Number six. Raising taxes. So you set up scenarios for each number you can roll. Uh, so the, the charts are here for us to fill in the blanks. All we're doing, we're filling in a worksheet by throwing dice. And then it's going to make a bunch of dots, and we're going to connect the dots. And there we go. Roxy, I'm starting to create a chaotic, evil, tiefling warlock. Well, uh, that is a good exercise, because I, I would love to hear, Roxy, as a new player to D&D... Um, I would like to hear what is making this character concept chaotic evil. So as you're going through the motions of creating that character, when you do and you have the personality and other things figured out, I want to hear what makes this character chaotic evil or what does this character do in expressing itself that is earning this as an, uh, as a, uh, an alignment. If you're willing to do some homework, quote-unquote. And, 12, we're past election season. Let's let's keep that down. <laughs> so, here again. We generated last week... A ran and again, a randomly, Hunter, almost everything you're seeing us build and connect the dots has been randomly generated. We generated an area that this campaign is going to take place in that was an Arctic swamp. And you're like, well, how does that work? Believe me, we did it. There's a video up uh, posted if you want to see how. All right, so if we have some frost giants that maybe aren't affected by this as much, then in this case, we have maybe a caravan supplier who's bringing in material goods uh, for support or even for trade. One of the giants here apparently is bent on plunder and wants to gain the favor of perhaps uh, their Jarl uh, back in their village. And so he is going to put pressure on the local confederacy here inside of this Arctic swamp 
because he wants ta yeah he wants to raise taxes on goods. I mean we're almost we keep saying we keep saying things like hey have you read the um, have you read the uh, uh, you know the history of like the American Revolution have you read the Federalist Papers? I, we're almost getting something like this right. Um. And so uh, the the giants that are supplying this outpost, or not really an outpost, it is a uh, it is a civilization itself, are supplying this confederacy of these city states, might be raising taxes. And you know what? There's no representation going on amongst the giants. These are humans and elves, who are being bound together by uh, uh, through political uh, dwarven political glue. Next up. What's our villain's weakness? A villain has a weakness, right? A villain has a flaw. What's ours? Let's roll a d8 and find out. Two. The villain's power is broken if the death of its true love is avenged. Oh, maybe then the giants come back. See, the dwarves are in control. Maybe there's some old animosity, some old blood feud going on. Because the dwarves are holding this uh, this confederacy together. The giants come back, see what's happening. And uh, suddenly there's a feud. And so this person wants to punish the dwarves and thereby the humans and elves that maybe they're neutral towards. However, maybe the PCs in this case can avenge the weakness or can exploit the weakness of the villain by finding this story arc, right? By finding that the villain was capable of feeling love and that just perhaps the dwarves, uh, the dwarves might have kidnapped her or killed her or... Maybe she went missing, and the giants blamed the dwarves. The dwarves said, "We didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, we're not. We're not. So, what, what are you being upset at us for?" And all of a sudden, you have uh, very uh, ardent dwarves versus very ardent giants who just butt heads, and nothing gets done because each of them are too proud to admit that one might have messed something up. Age of Tesla says, is this the headmaster of a college, raising the taxes of a small village to gain the favor of alien gods? And, oh, by the way, Tesla, you uh, you did something else. I, I didn't I didn't catch it because I was on a soapbox here ranting to the camera. Just because I say something or I put out a thought or idea doesn't mean that we that you all can't interpret what's up here in a different way. Tesla? We could see this scenario playing out similarly. And that could very well be a valid uh, a valid method to go down. And if you're comfortable telling that tale, bada boom, hey, forget about it. There you go. You can throw out ideas on this channel that are yours, or you can throw out mine if I'm off the deep end. Derek says maybe the death of their true love is what they're using as a political platform for their support. Ooh. You know, Derek. You know, Derek. If you recall, this territory is experiencing an out, uh, a, a possible vampire infestation. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to make vampire giants. I think that would be cool. Can you imagine that? You're a DM, and you're di and you're you're telling your party, you're traipsing through the the cold blowing wind, miles and miles of snow and ice pass under your furry boots. You know the wind howls, and you have to, you know you're, you're wearing special goggles even to keep the uh, to keep the light from blinding you. Ahead, you see a shape. A big lump, like almost like just a, a wart in the snow. And as you approach, it's it's a walrus. A large one, too. 
the walrus, though, it's not moving. And in fact, the it looks like it's shriveled, but not that it's been freeze-dried. And it, as you get closer to this walrus, you examine, and you see that there's two large punctures about two feet apart. And you notice, you make a medicine check. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like maybe it, it's, its ribs have been crushed a little bit. As it was thrown down, it, it almost looks like a giant hand held the walrus. And almost like giant fangs sucked the blood out of this large beast. And tossed it to the side. It's a very bizarre plotline we've rolled so far. I don't know if it's uh, if it's too bizarre, uh, Trust of Flum. Uh, politics, uh, it, in that sense, in this sense, is very much. Um, this can be a driving force that has a lot of different conflict. A Draco Lich uh, whose true love was a fair elf. Oh yeah, and by the way, dragons can be giants too. I know that I'm I'm going with the frost giant thing. And you said uh, you said Shlomo, it's Storm King's thunder. It doesn't have to just be giant giants. It could be. We even said there there could be a uh, a dragon in the area causing the blizzards. Um, it could be a, a Draco Lich or a, a a dragon vampire or something. A swamp ogre with a pet donkey was given control of a human society after marrying a princess that was magically transformed into an ogre herself. Brilliant. We're done. Good night, everyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm on to you, Sybil. Age of Tesla says we're uh, what we're really doing here is rolling random points of a plane, then drawing a curve to fit it. Yep, that's a very nerdy way of expressing it. And thank you for doing so, Tesla. Uh, seems like a ton of unearthed arcana is unlocked within the Ravnica Guild book, including centaurs. Yes. Vampire Giants takes us pretty close to being Alex Jones. Oh, with, with like conspiracy theories and stuff. Um, vampire Dragon... Wait. Vampire Giant Dragon Tarask. Oh, now we're just kit bashing everything together. Shaken Not Stirred says 12 for 10. <laughs> Chocolate says, I'm somewhat tempted to make a new character that is a Simic hybrid in race, but story-wise comes from a world where Ravnica and the Simic is not found. And just result of mad scientists? Exactly. Use that as a springboard. Uh, walruses are vampire giant Capri Suns. Yes, Dark Wolf. <laughs> yes, the Muffin Man. The one on Drury Lane? Yes. Okay. Now, because our villains are NPCs, lo and behold... We make them NPCs. Now, you're probably going to be more, more prone to giving them actual stats. The NPCs we made before don't have stats because they're not necessarily needed. Do not feel compelled as a DM to give stats to everything that lives and breathes and moves. And even if it's a major NPC, if you want to, Go nuts. Some people love the organization and they want to know everything about a character. I'm not going to poo-poo that. Instead, focus on the major points. Now, the villain will most likely have an encounter that is physical or lethal or something with the players. So you may want to go back and stat out this, this final boss character, just in case there is a tussle. But for right now, for what we're doing here, if you don't know a lick about 5th edition, good. You're pure and wonderful in what we're doing. You do not need to know mechanics. We're going to build the personality, the heart and soul, even if you argue that the villain doesn't have one. We're going to make the heart and soul of this character. And you do not need to know 5th edition for that.
Sewer pie, what about a giant kobold? How much larger? <laughs> yeah, exactly, DJ. You want to attack that unarmed baby? Why? All right, so look. Our occupation and history. We can already fill this in because of the couple prompts that we have already rolled up. The work has pretty well been done for us. Now we just follow the prompt here. In one sentence, describe the NPC's occupation and provide a brief historical note that hints at the character's past. Okay, one sentence. Uh, uh, let's say a trade caravan leader. Now, if you want this to be a dragon or something, that's fine. I'll amend it. Um... Uh, we've been throwing out ideas. I'm sticking with the giant giants, but we can modify it if you like another if you like another storyline, plot line, timeline, whatever, better. We can shift over to it um on paper paper here, or you can do it up here if if you like what we're doing, but you want to do it yourself. This is an exercise. You could do it along at home. What do I have? I have a PDF that you can just see for free on screen, and I'm using open office. So <laughs> there's not a big uh you can just get a piece of paper, too, at home and write it down. I, I certainly babble on and on long enough for you to write Trade Caravan Leader. Uh, trade Caravan Leader uh, that brings supplies uh, to the region um, on a... Um, on a... I don't know. Let's space it apart, right? Maybe on a biannual basis. So maybe it takes them a while to get here. They trade, they linger, then they leave. It takes them about a year to get back. They trade, they linger, they go back and forth. History. Um, only just started returning to this place after the uh, Confederacy began under the Dwarven Insurgency against the squabbling elves and humans. <clears throat> after uh, after the initial visit, he returned with more of his kind, including his wife. Or again, you can paint a culture, right? If we say instead of his wife, if we went one of his, well, uh, including one of his wives or his favorite wife or whatever. Um, or if you want to even just leave it open and say spouse. Or you want to be specific and say husband. You're making a culture for these people with every word of your sentence. Every word here can explode outward and make more of your world come to life however you want it to do. That's the beauty of... By the way, we're in NaNoWriMo, if, if you don't know. I'm not writing a novel, but if I am not giving you a ton of brain juice to do so... Yeah. On the last visit... Uh, one of them became sick. Unknown. She was an initial carrier of the vampiric plague. She died, and her husband has avowed to punish uh, the filthy people of this place for spreading disease among his tribe. In so doing, he will appeal to his Jarl and gain political advantage at home and possibly after conquering this place, he'll be made 
governor of it. There we how, how's that? It's a simple paragraph. And you can have so much fun with this. You don't need to read like John Grisham novels. You don't need all this like in-depth political intrigue and and you know sort of like paramilitary, you know, uh, Jason Bourne style whatever. This is simple. People can latch onto it. No vampire pun intended. And you can have a lot of flexibility with how how this goes and where this goes. Uh, Tesla says she's punk worth fighter. Shield dwarf fighter. All right, I can. Um... All right, so gilded. I will. Um... I will make a note of this, and then I can work with you to. Uh, because if this is in New Zealand, there is going to be more than just a three dollar. Um, there is going to be more than just a three dollar uh fee, uh, to ship it down that way. But I can work with you on this. Got to work in the morning. Didn't even realize. Oh, hey, I, if you were enraptured, Flump, thank you. But also, go to bed. Be well, Flump. Here, I'll, I'll I'll wave a tendril at you. No problem, Gilded. And I, I say that not because I'm trying to shake you down and go after your kneecaps. I just want to make sure that we're completely out in the open and we're above board with our, our transaction. Uh, who is the villain's true love that avenging her death breaks his power? I mean, power doesn't have to be he, he stops becoming magical. His power could very well just be his conviction. You know, the fact that he's willing to go out of his way uh, to try and usurp an, another entire government that's already fragile after being usurped. That could be power as well. Uh, Gilded, what I'll do for you is here uh, in Adopt a Mini. Let's see, G. Uh, so between Forsaken and Igneal, or I'll replace Igneal in, unless he gets more uh, minis. I will keep track of the minis you've purchased, and we can keep uh, we can keep a, a figure, um, a number in U.S. dollars. Uh, to make sure that we're accounting for things little bit by little bit. I'm patient. You have a good long while. You take your time, and we will build this up together, okay? The small cup is back. Yes, Shlomo. And it's it has some iced tea in it. Two new summonable elementals in Ravnica. Oh, well, they're probably made weirds, didn't they? Like a steam weird, and, and what's the other one? All right. What is his appearance? You can roll several times, but if you just want to focus on, like, what's the one big thing you catch? It's number five. Ragged, dirty clothes. A steam coil weird and an ice electric one. Oh, interesting. But what's their CR? Is it five or below so that a uh, circle of the moon druid can turn into them? So he, he comes in, he looks disheveled, you know, and he's known for looking this way. And he might use that as a, sort of a, a bargaining technique. Like, yeah, hey, look, I'm just a poor trader. I, I come in here and he's wearing it. Which, uh, which, by the way, wouldn't this be an awesome juxtaposition to Here we go. Our vagrant who lives on the streets. He has no home. But you know what? 
he keeps his suit clean because that's all he has. So we have an innocuous, possibly friendly NPC vagrant, like a, you know, a homeless. Uh, he he drifts, um, that we've made for the story, and yet we have this powerful, that we have this powerful villain, uh, who is raggedy and doesn't put focus on his appearance. And again, we did this completely randomly, but look at what we can pull, right? You can't have light without dark. You you can't the juxtaposition, the clashing creates these opportunities to tell a story and to create compelling characters even if they are bad guys or NPCs off to the side of a road in a ditch alright his abilities again for a villain you might want to go through and stat him out but we just want the idea what is he good at what is he not so good at let's roll it d6 is high high strength that works. Low wisdom. Yep, give it a look, El Eskimo. Uh, many should be, have the Ravnica material on Friday. Keep in mind, and by the way, this is on our Discord, and I thank Daily for uh, for uh, sharing this as well. Because this is something that had me concerned at, at my at my game store. Um, I'll bring it up here real quick. Because there was a quality control issue, there are some stores that may not receive their Ravnica material on time for tomorrow. So I will urge you, if your game store does not have it, uh, please do not get uh, please do not get upset. It may be absolutely beyond their control. Low whiz characters can be a lot of fun to play. They tend to be very direct, right? They're just focused. They don't really care what's going on around them. Um, but if, if you do catch their attention, then uh, heaven help you, right? Now, he has a particular talent. What is that talent? What's something that, you know what? It might make him just a little bit more humanized. Nine. Great at impersonations. Complicated trade incoming, says Derek. I, I will be ready. Uh, tr uh, Flump gets my blue dragon and I get his lich. Give the lich to Daly. And I'll take Black Viper and the beheaded Cass uh, Cass uh, Cassandra. Alright, you want the lich to Daly or did you want the lich to Diadems? I'm going to take a picture of this. And I'll do that when we're done. <laughs> High strength, low wisdom, ragged, dirty clothes, good at impersonations. That's that's me, says Gilded <laughs> Misanthropy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I, I hope I don't have to pay your royalties for appearing in this story. Low wisdom folks are subject to the uh, uh, to the Dunning Kruger effect. I've heard of that name, and and if it has a more common name, can you uh, provide that? Uh, because I am, it's on the tip of my tongue, but it, it's not manifesting. Twelve for ten. Low wiz throws out all the ideas I had. Now, look, we could be saying that a low wisdom score is 12 because everything else is just more insanely high than 12. So when we say low, it doesn't mean he's a dummy. Can you describe the effect? 
you know, because there, there's other things that, um, you know, there's like the, uh, you know, you get groupthink or you get echo chamber. And these probably have more complex. You get the uh, the heat paradox. You get the hedonistic treadmill, uh, the heuristic availability. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, effects that might go by uh, alternate names. Oh, to most of what you're pitching? Gotcha, Tesla. Oh, people who think they're smarter than they are. Okay, that... Thank you. I'm a dummy. People of low ability have illusory superiority and mistakenly assess their cognitive ability as greater than it is. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Shlomo, exactly. Look at that. Look at that horrible wisdom score that, that, that this character has. An 18? Oh, that, that just... <laughs> Everything's a competition than anything else. Hey, so if we're challenging conceptions, yay, that's kind of what we want to do and have fun doing. All right, his mannerisms. And by the way, all of these are going to prompt you to write a sentence out. And that's to get you to think on paper, right? Take, Don't just say graded impersonations. Now, we're talking about uh, about this, and we can even say, um, we can even say this. Uh, if it's a dragon... Maybe people don't know. Maybe there's not really sexual dimorphism among dragons. Or they just know polymorph shapes or something. He's great impersonations. What about this? Uh, what if... Uh, I mean, he might be a comedian even. And he does impersonations that way. What if uh, he wears these raggedy clothes? Because if he takes them off, um, he can he can appear as a completely different person. Like he wears a fake a fake beard as a frost giant or something. You know, people don't really know what he looks like. Uh, and so he, if he comes in with a caravan of 20 other giants, he can look like any of them. You know, look at, uh, in fact, uh, kind of look, dwarves and, and giants in D&D &D lore and maybe your own homebrew have many commonalities despite them being supposed enemies. Um, you know, depending on the dwarves that you run at your tabletop, uh, there are many or historically or even in mythology and lore where the women also have beards. And so it can actually be difficult to tell if you're not a dwarf, a male dwarf from a female dwarf. Giants could be just that. Uh, it could be similar. So we actually have someone who can pass himself as a female or herself as a male. I, I know we've been talking like it's a he that's leading this. Heck, do we even know? I didn't flip a coin. And so by doing this, by being able to pretend that the leader is just some common Joe Schmo that is hauling cargo in the same caravan, that could be interesting, right? It'd be kind of like, uh... Alright, I know it's an old game. This is going to be a spoiler uh, for a game called Bioshock. We are talking about Bioshock earlier with like Art Deco statues holding up whatever, okay? I'm going to give a spoiler for Bioshock. When I finish, I'll wave my hands. So if you don't want a spoiler for Bioshock, mute your volume. And maybe like go like this over my mouth so you can't see. All right? So I'm going to begin the spoiler. And when I finish, I'll wave my arms. Okay? Here we go. What if the villain is like Atlas in Bioshock. Who then turns out to be Fontaine. Or by being Atlas can move among the common folk. Can influence the common folk. Especially if he wants to start uh, some sort of a political upheaval and also bears a grudge. A big grudge. And therefore, we, we have kind of like an Andrew Ryan-style dwarven leader who's running this confederacy. We're clear. Spoilers for Bioshock is over. Del Corin, spoiler, Quark runs Rapture. That, ha, 
I that <laughs> I like that. Look, we all know Quark runs Deep Space Nine. Let's not kid ourselves. Quark actually runs Deep Space Nine. Daily, no, I didn't get to my computer in time. Oh, I finished that game in 2007. My mistake. Eh, look, it's... <laughs> Uh, Tesla says telling a male dwarf from a female dwarf is easy. Dwarf exists equals male dwarf. <laughs> Kappa. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. Y you can't have uh, gender inequality if everyone is the same. <laughs> also, if I didn't say it, uh, DJ, thank you for your sort of like live commentary on the side about the contents of Ravnica. I'm not just saying that sarcastically. I appreciate... I like looking over and seeing the little tidbits you're offering. Well, I know, Gilded, but I'd rather be polite about it if I can. All right. Mannerisms. D20. We rolled another nine. Frequently uses the wrong word. Ooh. <laughs> um. Characters like this can be fun, and I'll tell you, it's actually a bit of a challenge as a DM because you have to purposely mess up what they're saying. Yeah, inconceivable. Um, or, uh, uh, let, uh, let me, uh, uh, you know, he speaks, he's trying to give a villain talk, you know, he's on a monologue and he says, <laughs> you there, let me erudite you on what is happening. You mean a uh, uh, heck, I even, I even messed it up. Um, like illustrate or eluc elucidate, uh, and he just, and he looks down furious you know, because you corrected him. And he was so convinced he used the proper word. Um. Hey, Fluffy, welcome. Explain a date. Thralls are constructs. Well, I mean, so are flesh golems, to be fair, DJ. And that's kind of what they are. If you're running a character like this, as a DM, you might, on the side in a notebook, have a couple commonly misused words. Your players are going to love you for, for doing this, by the way. And it'll make your villain that much more uh, memorable. Elucid, yeah. Or, uh, oh, misunderestimate. <laughs> you, you there, don't misunderestimate me. Irregardless of what you think. Hey, 12 for 10, there you go, irregardless. <laughs> <laughs> For all attentive purposes, I want to explain what I'm doing to you. Unthaw. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Derek. <laughs> oh, or yeah, or even the wrong tense. <laughs> Look at them ran away. <laughs> and and you know what uh now you can use this to create a humorous campaign or he can be serious in it and what it does though is it breaks the tension just enough 
things are getting serious. People are getting hooked in. And all of a sudden... Uh, Or, yeah, uh, or a bunch of, you know, uh, you could include, uh, you could include a stutter. You could include, um, see, see what I did? Uh, um, er, uh, he might not be the best, or she might not be the best public speaker. Have fun with it. This is your villain. You know this villain better than your players do. Shlomo, it, yeah, it could even come out as a result of an accent. <laughs> uh, you know, whenever, uh, whenever we have um, uh, Santa's Blay, Santa's Blay in here, uh, because he is French. I love talking with an outrageous French accent. Oh, oh. c'est vrai. I do it every day, and I would again if I had the chance. You can have fun with accents, too. In fact, uh, you know, you can even say that if you understand Giant, he's speaking in a giant cadence, but he's not using the common... He's not using the common language. He's using the common language with a giant cadence. And it could come out as uh, as something in, even inappropriate uh, because he's taking something literally instead of um, localizing himself. Yeah, a fat in your general direction. Mon dieu. Zut alors. Mais oui. Il fait froid d'aujourd'hui, non? Derek says when Matty Murray uses a French accent, it's outrageous and hilarious. When I use a French accent, he says very heavily. Remember, no H. Evely. Evely. Interaction. Let's roll a D12. Number 11. Oh, he is quiet. Therefore, when he speaks, he means what he says. Even if it does not come out how you say properly. Or perhaps he does speak much, but he speaks at a low volume. As Tales of the Torridor Primogen or La Grande. Ask for it. Ask Tales of the Torridor. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. You're fine, Derek. Now, useful knowledge, this is another one where we get to fill in the gaps. Make it just a couple sentences, maybe a couple catch-alls, or one catch-all topic, and then one or two specific things. For example, he has knowledge of the world outside this, uh, oh, this was a big word used a couple winters ago when we had some really bad ones. So I need to put in my order for my local game shop in Zandalski. Eins wurde die Dungeon of the Mad Mage, Maps and Miscellany Module Supplement. Eins wurde die Dragonheist Dice Set and HP Counter. Added 10 dollars for that whole sending with 1,300 miles. Wow! Daily! You have a beautiful German accent and your numbers were spot on. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for the order here. Uh, so, uh, okay, th th I, that should be able to cover the shipping here. Uh, so the maps and miscellany and, uh, the dragon heist, uh, dice set and HP counter, and then a little bit, I'm on it, sir. And that'll, uh, I'll, when I go to the store, I will make sure that gets out to you. Uh, Shlomo, uh, Wait, we got a guy from France in our group, too. We made a special emoji. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead. You're, you're welcome to, Shlomo. Yeah, Daily, if it's if it turns into be something bigger, I don't think that it will unless... Uh, do you want... Uh, can I send it media mail? The dice might not let me. Um, I might be able to still send it first class package unless you want it priority. And if it's priority, it might be a couple bucks more to put it into a priority box. Because it might be like 12 or 13 bucks or something. Yeah, actually, DJ, the case incentive for the miniatures is Niv-Mizzet. And I should be getting, I hope, a couple of him in. Oh, I love it, Shlomo. And I hope your friend does, too. All right, and you want it sent out, too, Derek? I, I'll do the trades tonight after our broadcast, and I'll get it sent out to you. He posts it all the time. How many bits would a case cost? I'd have to get a quote to you, DJ. Um, let me see if I'm getting them in, or if for some reason I was caught in the bubble. Uh, so I will get back to you on that, okay? Uh, did you change your name on Discord so I can tag you there and find you? If not, please do so. All right, so his knowledge of the world outside this polar vo uh, vortex, uh, including even the white dragon that lives in the area causing it. So this could be a big, uh, this could be a broad concern. Specifically, uh, he may be very savvy when it comes to economics and even political discourse all right his ideal let's roll 2d6 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then a d6 within whichever category we determine one and six so he does have a good ideal of self-sacrifice Just because he's a bad guy doesn't mean he can't have a good ideal. And in this case, self-sacrifice could come, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, in a form of altruism. You want to kill someone with kindness? You want to enforce some altruism on people? Many times, if he wants to look at raising taxes, I know a lot of us might be a little sore when it comes to political, you know, whatever recently, because that's the season. I'm not talking about parties or platforms, but let's look at, you know, we need to fund something. Roads. We'll, we'll say roads. That's That tends to be very neutral. How do you pay for roads? And you say, well, look, roads bring kids to school. They, they, can, uh, they have commerce, uh, you know, private businesses and homes and public use and all this. How do you do that? You got to tax people and you got to enforce the taxation by putting men with weapons in. Uh, you know, in the power of the law behind them as an ultimate, you know, do this or be removed from society in some way. And so he might actually have this kind of, uh, this self-sacrifice through even altruism, or he might even see self-sacrifice in, I mean, we could take it to another kind of an extreme when we look at people who commit um, acts of terrorism, whether they're physical violence or emotional violence or economic terrorism which is maybe what he wants to cause and he will sacrifice himself for this ideal or this good right if he can't have his partner no one can and he's going to punish the people who are responsible for that We're, there's all kinds of ideas we can take this and that's if we want him to actually be bad by being good he could honestly be self-sacrificing for everyone in his caravan because he's funding everything himself. Just to get here so, uh, so you know, they can trade, he'll get his private revenge. He doesn't even have to blow up a, a, a whatever. Or I guess stomp on it if he's a giant or something. 
So he's he's helping his neighbors and he's helping himself. And he's funded everything because he says, I, it, this is a most dangerous enemy, by the way. If, you're, if your villain says, I don't care if I die, that all of a sudden spikes the danger level of your, of your villain in your story. Because he's willing to do whatever, whatever he wants, or she, uh, whatever it'll take. You know, kind of think of like the, the Heath Leather, uh, Heath Leather, Heath Ledger Joker figure. I'll rob banks to burn money. I want to send a message. I don't care. Sure, kill me. I've, I've won. I've done the thing that I've wanted to do. Or, I mean, that, I don't think that's a spoiler. Or, in case it's a spoiler, again, I'll do this when it's done. This is regarding Watchmen. So, whoop, mute your volume if you don't want a, a Watchmen spoiler. And I'll wave my hands, okay? Ready? Watchmen spoiler in three, two, one. Ozymandias. He already won. Nothing the heroes did would have mattered for his plan. In fact, they all kind of played into it at the end. The bad guy won, and the world was saved because of it. You're good! Yay! Spoilers over! Uh, Derek, oh, you're taking off? Alright, you gotta get some sleep. Be well, Derek. I'll see you around. Uh, thank you very much. Somebody made a picture of, wow, one of the orc towns being invaded by Americans looking for oil. I mean, there's all sorts of political cartoons going around. The memes have been real this year. Oh my gosh. Um, one of the dudes is blue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he is definitely blue all over. All right, the villain's bond. D10. Yeah, we, another six. Drawn to a special place, I think. Now, we could have that be a special place within this uh, confederacy, or this place meant something to him before it was re-found that uh, other people had moved in and have built a civilization atop something that maybe meant something to he and his wife, or his wives, plural. Or her and her wife, or wives, or husbands, or whatever. This is your story. Tell it however you want. And lastly, his flaw or a secret. Now, this doesn't have to be his weakness, right? This this is very much one. And if you don't want to make another flaw or secret, you don't have to. We already have a weakness. But let's be thorough. Let's roll a d12. Four. Oh, this works out so well. Envies another creature's possessions or station. We already got it above. Oh, this. And we subjected ourselves. Like, th this was meant to be, right? I mean, you could look at it that way. It's probably, I'm sure it's a fallacy of some kind. But this works. I think we have a solid villain on our hands here. And it all works because we just built this step by step. We talked about it. We threw out ideas. You know, we, we threw some we threw some uh, sand in. We shook it so it made a layer. We put another layer of sand in. We shook it. We have another layer. It's even. Layer, 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 layer. And now we have, an or, uh, we have organic PCs that exist in an organic uh, uh, terrain feature, like a, a region, who interact with organic NPCs. And one of the villains that we've uh, sketched out, because there's going to be another one, Another, uh, uh, our main villain here is organic. All through random dice. And it doesn't seem contrived. I hope not anyway. <laughs> Maybe it does to you. You can call me out on it if, if you think that I'm, uh, you know, if I'm selling you a bridge. I don't know. Like an onion. Exactly. Or a parfait even. I would accept a parfait, Civil Hermit. So wait, is this literally Lawrence from Bloodborne? I have not played Bloodborne, so I don't know who you're talking about, Tesla. Je suis désolé. <laughs> Ooh. 
HBO is doing a Watchmen series. Oh, that should be interesting. Yeah, and I saw that Netflix uh, is spending like a billion dollars uh, to reenact the uh, Cimmerillion or to make a bunch of Lord of the Rings side stories. It could be interesting stuff. Okay. We made a villain. It's almost 3 a.m., but you know what? I'm, I'm still kind of feeling the mojo here, okay? Why don't we take like a five-minute break? You know, go to the bathroom, uh, get a snack or a drink. Just get up and stretch. You know, if you have a cat or a dog or a hamster or a bird, you know, tell it you care. And we'll come back and let's make uh, sort of a side villain or a second villain uh, for this campaign. Like a sub-boss, I guess you could say. Or a foil. That could be a good one. Not necessarily the main villain, but someone who just might get in the way. It's like Ultros in Final Fantasy VI, right? And Breaking Bad is getting a movie. Oh, my. Bring beer? I think I only have one beer left. I don't know if I'm feeling beer this late. I might just want a, a big pitcher of ice water. But, uh, okay, everyone. Let's take five minutes or so and come back, and we'll knock out another... Uh, and we'll go through it quickly. We'll make one more villain, and uh, and and we'll go through the process that we've already practiced, and bada-bing, bada-boom. Hey, forget about it. We got it done. <laughs> 